Hi everyone, thanks for joining us with Altair Solar. I'm your host, Ariana Escalante, and I'm joined by President Khalid Al Sheriff. I wanna to talk today about something that is on all of our minds when it comes to solar, which is saving money, specifically with the tax credits, rebates, and incentives that come with solar. So can you tell us about some of the main ones? Right, the ITC, the Investment Tax Credit, Solar Tax Credit, or Federal Tax Credit, many names for it, it's the same thing. It's a program that the federal government enacted back in 2006, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's basically a 30% a dollar for dollar rebate or a tax credit from the federal tax government. Uh, so this program, uh, you know, if your system cost is, let's say, $20,000, uh, you get back 30% of that, which would be $6,000. Uh, so you have to have that tax liability to get it back, you know. That's, that's the difference between that and a standard rebate. Uh, some other states, uh, other than California, California right now, they used to have uh, incentives, they all got exhausted. Uh, there's maybe some still uh, left on some local utility, uh, on the basically the utility level. Uh, but other states, they might still have some incentives. You obviously want to check with your local contractor to make sure uh, what's available and what you qualify for. And finally, there are uh, on the local utility level, so uh, you still have some incentives to go uh, solar because uh, you know, solar basically ends up, you know, saving money for the utility as well as actually for the homeowners. So these are kind of like the, the major three uh, ways, uh, you know, the incentives are available. On top of that, there's uh, the battery uh, incentive, the S-Chip. Uh, and that's uh, still available in California. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about the battery incentive. Right, so uh, the SGIP or the self-incentive generation program, that's basically a battery specific uh, uh, rebate program. It's not a tax credit, so you don't have to have a tax liability. It's uh, basically just a straightforward rebate. Uh, right now, it's a, this is throughout the state of California, but it's administered through the major utilities, uh, which would be San Diego Gas and Electric, uh, Southern California Edison and Pacific Gas and Electric. This is basically the major utilities or, uh, or investor-owned utilities in California. Also, if you have, uh, you know, um, Southern California Gas is your company and it's not, let's say you're not with uh, Southern California Edison, you can still qualify uh, through, through the program. Uh, the program covers uh, uh, if you are in a fire zone, for example, it's great option because it covers pretty much the entire system cost, you know, uh, because you do realize that you're going to have, uh, you know, more uh, blackouts. So you want to make sure to have your uh, system or you have your battery so that you have uh, uh, electricity or power during an outage, especially if you have a medical condition or if you've experienced a lot of outages, those are kind of like the conditions to qualify for the higher rebate tier. Uh, other than that, there's, uh, there's the lower rebate tiers that basically, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it has like six steps. So every time the step, basically the funds are exhausted or reserved, then it goes to the next step and it goes lower and lower. But recently also the state funded more money into the program, more towards the resiliency program, which is the one if you're in a fire zone. Uh, you get actually, uh, uh, like I said, the entire system cost almost gets covered by the incentive. So, so it's a great ch choice for people that are want to go uh, solar. I want to have a battery and want to basically be protected against, against those blackouts. If we do live in a state where the incentives have been largely exhausted, do we know if there are other incentives coming in the future? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think there are any because uh, the whole idea behind the incentives is to basically allow the economics of scale to kick in. So solar, you know, if you like, let's say I give an example of a $10,000 system, let's say that system would be and don't quote me, you know, this is just based on just rough numbers. Let's say somebody's, uh, you know, electric bill uh, on a monthly basis, on a monthly average is about $120. So maybe, or $150, let's say that's the system cost they'll have at the end of the day. Obviously, state to state is different, you know. So that same system 15 years ago would have cost probably thirty to $40,000. Right, the same system, same components, maybe a little bit even less advanced of components than, than we have today. So the whole idea behind the tax incentives or, or the incentives in general is to basically drive more people to buy solar so that this way basically more money is pumped into the manufacturers so they can actually improve the technology and make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as the tax credit itself, 
uh, you know, there are talks about maybe potentially renewing that. So, but uh, local um, or state incentives, you know, each state is different. I'm very familiar with California because that's where we operate from. Uh, but uh, other states, they still have them. And whether they're gonna renew them or not, it really depends on the, uh, you know, how, how fast people can adopt solar. Uh, that's a, it's a good question, but uh, you know it's it's one to look for, and maybe in future episodes we can we can uh, you know consider to uh, you know do more research in other states and find out about that and inform our viewers. Yeah. yeah. From what I understand, a lot of people may own their solar panels, but some people don't necessarily own them, whether they are paying them off over time or maybe they're even leasing or renting the panels. So can those people also qualify for these rebates or incentives, or do they maybe save money in other places? Right, that's a good question. Uh, so if you're leasing a system, you're kind of indirectly qualifying for it, but when you lease a system, you don't own the system, so you don't qualify for the ITC or the tax credit from the federal government. But the company that's leasing the system for you, they're the ones that qualify for it, but they end up passing some of those savings on to you as well. So indirectly, you are saving, and it's great for people that don't have a tax liability, so that makes a lot of sense for them to lease the system. Uh, but you know, if you have a small tax liability, you have to do the math. You know, if you have a tax liability that's going to be, let's say, uh, five thousand dollars, and your tax credit is, uh, let's say, your tax credit in that case is seven thousand. So if people say, okay, well, I'm going to lose two thousand. Well, no, you're not, because you actually can carry over tax credit for three years. So that's actually mm. great, because then you can take advantage of it the first year, five thousand, and then the remainder, two thousand, you can take it later. So, uh, but again, that's you know, you have to own the system to 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 qualify for this as leasing. You don't own it. But some savings uh, do, uh, you know, uh, transfer to the homeowner through the leasing company. Where would be the best way to learn about the incentives in our areas? Uh, you know, there's a lot of resources uh, that you can you can look into and you can uh, find out what's going on. Obviously, your, your, your number one source would be your solar contractor. They're aware of all the incentives in your area. And then, you know, so there's also the uh, California Solar Initiative. That's the CSI. That's a great uh, area to find out about incentives in California. And, uh, you know, there is a database for, you know, if you just do a small Google search, you know, just, uh, you know, local incentives in my area, you'll have tons of results coming up. But, uh, like, the number one source would be your, your um, uh, local contractor that will uh, actually show you the savings that you have based on the different financial model that you choose to go for. With Altair Solar, is that a big focus of your team is to really help your customers know what is available to them? Absolutely, of course, yeah. We want to make sure that the customer is 100% educated. We want to make sure that they choose the correct, uh, basically, financial vehicle for their solar system to basically have them uh, realize their uh, savings or realize their investment as fast as possible. So whether that's uh, owning the system, paying out for it cash or finance, uh, and these, and we will talk in more details in a future episode about this because this is very important. You know, people want to know: uh, should I spend the money that I have in the bank, or should I actually just lease the system, or should I just take a loan, whatever the situation might be? So we do offer all options. We do educate the consumer based on their current uh, circumstances, which one would work best for them. Wonderful. Well, thanks again for joining us. Again, this is President Khalid Al Sheriff of Altair Solar, and I'm Ariana Escalante. If you have any other questions that you'd like us to chat about, please let us know, and we'll see you in a future episode. Yeah.